Hello, welcome back to Akista TV. Okay, now you have a Flipper Zero. Now you have a M5 stack with a Bruce firmware or you already have your Wi-Fi pineapple. Main problem is you don't have any way of testing those cool functionalities. So I'll be sharing to you five mundane tools that I use to test those functionalities. And the first one I want to share to you is how to test a sub gigahertz. I usually use a, this one, a doorbell. And what I really like about it is the audio cue that you have successfully hacked something, that you have successfully replayed something. Um, it has a volume adjuster so that it will not be intrusive to your neighbors. But yeah, so... There's this distinct feeling that when you have successfully hacked something, you can hear that sound. And this is why I really like using a doorbell for any of the sub gigahertz hacking that I do. Okay, so the next one that I want to share to you is an FM radio. Hack RF has a functionality where you can broadcast things. And this is a very, very nice way to test it out. It has this manual <laughs> FM AM switch so that you can sync the frequency to where your hack RF is broadcasting. And there's something magical when you finally hear something that you're broadcasting from your PC to an actual FM radio. Just don't do it on a public setting. That is illegal. But if you can just do it inside your house and you can hear the, it on this actual radio, that is really, really cool. Now, the next thing I want to share to you is this. Okay, if you don't know this, this is a decorational light. It has different types of color, but most importantly, it has a remote control with an IR functionality. So any infrared hacking or like replay attacks that... I tried out. I always use this. And like with the doorbell that I have, I usually have this visual cue for, for this one that the hack works. So you can change color. So if your hack is working, you can see the color is changing. It is turning off, on. Um, it has a spot, spotlight mode or like a disc mode. The visual cue coming from this one that your hack is working really really nice so the next thing is this a mini smart router and i usually use this for wi-fi hacking because it has its own wi-fi so you can do the auth attacks here um the one that are available uh, with flipper zero and bruce firmware using marauder and yeah not only that you can practice capturing the four part handshake on this one so that you can decrypt it. The, only the main problem with this is that you need to attach or yeah, to connect multiple devices so that you will have bigger chances of capturing the four part handshake. But yeah, main advantage of this is that you are not affecting your main Wi Fi with it. Okay. And the last thing that I have here is an RFID reader. As you can see, the wires are exposed here. <laughs> and the thing is, all of the RFID reader doesn't have any logic. And that's the reason why this one is exposed. Because um, all of the logics that are happening are, for example, on the smart lock. And the important thing is that you just capture whatever signal is being sent. And that's the reason why it is really important for you to have this RFID reader when you are testing it out. So that when you copy it and you copy a certain RFID, you can make sure that it will work. For example, on the smart lock, if you're going to put a smart lock here, or like if you have an ESP key on here, you can make sure that those keys that you are or that you have copied are the exact same key that will work on whatever you put at the end of this smart or at the end of this RFID reader. There you have it. All of these five mundane tools that I use for testing out those hacking functionalities. 
These are all budget friendly tools that you can use. So there are no excuses for you to have this on your very own hacking lab. And if you like this video, I have other hacking videos here on Hackista TV. Check it out. Till next time, my fellow Hackista.